All right, let's begin our transformer model series with the generative pre-trained transformer model, also known as GPT. So there are multiple GPT models, um, all developed at OpenAI. And um, what they have in common is that they are all unidirectional. So they are mainly trained to predict the next word in the sentence. And there are three versions up to the point when I'm recording this. So there was the original GPT version one, which came out in 2018. It had 110 million parameters. Then there's a GPT version two with 1.5 billion parameters, more than 10 times larger, and um, that came out in 2019. And then GPT-3 with 175 billion parameters in 2020. So in this video, we will focus on GPT version one, and I will have separate videos on version two and version three. So one of the main ideas behind the, the GPT model is, or what they hypothesized is that the lack of labeled data is one of the main bottlenecks behind scaling up the performance of large language models. So they proposed a two-step training process in this paper. They uh, refer to it as semi-supervised learning. In general, semi-supervised learning uh, essentially means leveraging labeled and unlabeled data. So here this semi-supervised process is this two-step process that I briefly outlined in the previous video, where the first step is the pre-training and the second step is the fine-tuning. So here they refer to it as generative pre-training. This is when they use a large unlabeled data set for pre-training the transformer model. So nowadays that's also called yeah, self-supervised learning. And then in the second, in the discriminative fine-tuning step, they use a smaller labeled data set specific to the task that you might be interested in. For instance, let's say movie review classification. And this is then supervised learning using the pre-trained model. It's essentially a form of transfer learning. So the pre-training itself, so the step one happened on a data set that they collected. They call it the book corpus data set, which consists of 7,000 unpublished books. And the architecture they used is based on the decoder architecture of the original transformer model that we talked about, the one that was proposed in the attention is all you need paper. Yeah, here's a visualization of the GPT architecture and the different downstream tasks for fine tuning. So let's start with the architecture first. So here on the left hand side, and you can see this just looks like the transformer and the attention is all you need paper, the original transformer. So you have also the skip connections here. You have the layer norm in between the feed forward layer. You have the masked multi-head self-attention layers and so forth. So in that way, it's just a decoder from the original transformer paper, except that they have here 12 transformer blocks instead of the six transformer blocks they had in the attention is all you need paper. So. Another thing here is um, that you can see there are two boxes here as the output. One is called text prediction and one is the task classifier. So again, first there is a pre-training happening with the next word prediction. And then after the pre-training, you have the fine tuning on the different downstream tasks. So one task you are interested in. So, and you can, so first of all, this box I think should symbolize this pre-training task, which is the next word prediction. Here they call it text prediction and the task classifier I think should symbolize the downstream task for fine tuning. However, during fine tuning, so after the pre-training has completed, you can keep the text prediction and train both at the same time. So you can have a loss for training to predict the next word while you are also updating the model for the task um, prediction. So you have two different linear layers here. One is for the next word prediction and one is for the task prediction. And they experimented whether this is good or bad and I will show you the results in the next slide, like wh whether for fine tuning they should keep this or not. So right now though, let's just focus on the different tasks. So let's assume we have completed the pre-training for the next word prediction and now we are fine tuning 
for the different tasks. So on the right hand side, this here are visualizations for the different tasks they looked at and how the input has to be formatted. So for instance, for classification, they provide a start token, the main text and an extraction token. It's like an end token almost. And um, so end of sequence token essentially. And then they put this through the transformer and have an additional linear layer, an output layer. So it would be a fully connected layer for um, classification. You could then use softmax activation as the last activation and then use a cross entropy loss for training that. It's just like a classifier essentially. And uh, then they have another task called entailment. I think that's like uh, implication, like in math, uh, implication, like a logical uh, statement. So you have a premise, a delimiter, and a hypothesis. I think it's also essentially a classification, like a true false. Um, another one is similarity here. So comparing whether two texts are similar or not, or how similar they are, measuring the similarity. So here they provide text one, a separator, and text two. And then also maybe to keep things symmetric, text two followed by text one. They put both through the same transformer, add up the embeddings, then put that through a fully connected layer. And my guess is they then have something like a, maybe a L2 a distance or something that they minimize between similar texts and maximize between different texts. And then there's also one multiple choice class uh, task where they have the context with a possible answer, again, context with another answer and the context with a different answer. So we have n answers n possible answers. And it's essentially also a classification task. So you have then these different embeddings. And then you have a classifier choosing the one that is most likely the answer for that context. All right, so again, but the main idea here is that you have two steps. One is the pre-training. You train that on the next work prediction. And then you have the fine tuning where you fine tune on these downstream tasks. And here they did an ablation study looking at whether um, yeah, the performance is better or worse if you remove the next word prediction when you do the fine tuning. So here they call that the transformer with the auxiliary language model. So that's the full model. So the auxiliary language model is essentially this text prediction here. You get, yeah, pretty, let's say pretty good performance, average score of 74.7 that they computed here. And then the transformer without pre-training. So just doing the fine tuning without pre-training. And you can see that the transformer model without the pre-training is significantly or substantially worse, right? So the pre-training really helps. Then they have a transformer without the auxiliary language model. You can see it's even a little bit better. So if you essentially if you pre-train the model on the next word prediction and then get rid of this for the fine tuning and then just focus on the fine tuning, you can see it uh, is even a little bit better, but not on all tasks. So it's better on some tasks, but not on others. And then just for comparison, they had a regular LSTM. You can also see the LSTM here is worse than the full model. Okay, so this is GPT version one. Uh, by today's standards, this is already a very old model because there's already a GPT version two and three, but it's a good model to start with. And in the next video, before we cover the other GPT models, let's discuss the BERT model, which has a slightly different approach to using a transformer. I'm covering this one before covering the other GPT versions because in the BERT paper, they specifically compare their model to GPT one. So it's uh, in a way, it's the chronological order. We have GPT version one, BERT, GPT version two and three, like in a chrono chronological order. Okay, so the next video will be then on the BERT model.